And the Chief Justice says, no, you cannot do this under the Commerce Clause, that the mandate would be unconstitutional under the Commerce Clause. But he did find a reason that it is constitutional. I want to read from it. He, the Chief Justice in the majority decision writes, the Affordable Care Act's requirement that certain individuals pay a financial penalty for not obtaining health insurance may reasonably be characterized as a tax. Because the Constitution permits such a tax, it is not our role to forbid it or to pass upon its wisdom or fairness. So he's not saying, I love this law, I even like this law, but he's saying, you can have this law. He was doing what he said he was going to do in his confirmation hearings. He was saying, I'm not going to be an activist. I am not here to pass judgment on whether if I were a congressman, I would have voted for or against it. I, he, he said, is this law permissible under the Constitution? What was so flabbergasting about the opinion today was that the core of the debate had been about whether the Commerce Clause permitted Congress to pass this. And that's what most of the attention was in on. And he began his opinion from the bench by saying the Commerce Clause does not allow the Congress to pass this. But then, in a stunning, stunning development, it sure stunned me, he said the taxing power, which was a relatively minor part of the legal argument in this case, allowed Congress to do it, and he completely joined the four liberals on the court in upholding the law. And let's show, let's show our viewers the split here. You'd have the, in the majority, in the 5-4, the chief justice appointed by a Republican president, George W. Bush, then with the four Democratic appointees, Stephen Breyer, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Elena Kagan, and Sonia Sotomayor. And to the right, literally to the right, the four justices who were in the, on the dissent side, Antonin Scalia, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, and Anthony Kennedy. David Gergen, it is Anthony Kennedy, everybody thought, might be the swing vote here. In, in the end, uh, John Roberts uh, starts to build a legacy for the Roberts court. Yeah, it was. We were watching the wrong guy. The uh, Kennedy joined a fairly blistering dissent, and uh, I think all of us were surprised that Roberts played this role. Uh, it, there is a quality about Roberts, in effect, reaching for an argument that he thought would uphold it. Uh, Larry Tribe, the Harvard uh, constitutional scholar and someone who had, uh, who had backed Obamacare, uh, argued some time ago that he thought Roberts would do this uh, because he would wanted to protect the legacy of the court. Had Roberts come down on the other side joining this, the, the conservative justices, there would have been a cry uh, from the mainstream media and from many others on the left uh, that the court was entirely polarized, that it was entirely a partisan decision. Uh, while this decision has angered and frustrated a lot on the right, uh, it may help the court in the long run.